Well, we've got brutal cold weather across the country as an Arctic air mass that really just grips the country. And I was looking at some of the observations early on Monday morning. Many of the reporting locations across Wisconsin, South Dakota, Minnesota, North Dakota, both really the Dakotas, and even most of Iowa. I don't think I saw one station, though, outside of Iowa that was above zero this morning. And it was well below zero, too, into the 20s below zero. But what happens to this? A lot of you are wondering, is the coal going to break? And I'm going to tell you, yes, it will. It's going to take some time, but eventually we will see warmer temperatures take shape across the country. The cold that we're seeing right now will start to break as we head into the weekend, at least the incredibly cold weather where we're, you know, 20, 30 below zero with wind chills close to 50 below zero. That starts to change. It's going to stay cold, though, across the south below average. Eventually, we'll start to warm up, and this weather pattern does change, and this very cold Arctic air moves back to the north as our polar vortex gets strong. Now, some of the uh, the models try to break off another piece of cold air, not nearly as chilly as what we're seeing now into the Great Lakes into the northeast toward the 30th and the 31st. But look, a much warmer pattern setting up across the southeast and also across the deep south and into the uh, parts of Texas. I'm telling you right now, it, this is very unusual to see winter storm warnings all the way into south Texas along the Gulf Coast into the Florida Panhandle, into Georgia. Multiple winter storm warnings out through the next several days for snow, ice, freezing rain, sleet, as this Arctic air continues to push to the south. This is the look at your temperature forecast for the next 24 hours. That cold air continues to dive into the south. It's going to undercut some of that moisture at the surface, so now we're going to get the potential for some of that freezing rain, sleet, and snow. And further to the east, even though we're not getting the snow and the moisture up here, although there will be some lake effect snow, it is going to be brutally cold, especially Tuesday morning uh, into Pennsylvania, New York. Temperatures likely bottoming out 10 below zero, maybe even colder. Highs on Tuesday, not much better. Single digits, teens, and some areas may not get above zero I'm telling you, Wednesday morning could be another really cold morning, and this could be the coldest weather we've seen in many years for parts of Pennsylvania, even into West Virginia with temperatures dropping into the teens below zero, maybe even to the 20s below zero, into some of the coldest sheltered valleys. Let's talk about the precipitation across the central part of the country. First, we're going to dive into each section of the country and just sort of look at things. Cold Arctic high pressure settling in right over Kansas, funneling that cold air now toward the Gulf Coast. Moisture overrunning that, and here comes the wintry precipitation. It starts to pick up as we head into Tuesday morning, and then it spreads east along the Gulf Coast. It's not going to move very far to the north, so once you get up here into north Mississippi, north Alabama, northern Louisiana, even into Arkansas, we're not dealing with any precipitation as this cold, arctic, dry, high pressure is just locked in. As we move through the rest of the week, Temperatures are not going to warm up much across the south. They won't be as cold as what we're seeing, but don't expect a huge rebound like we see sometimes after a big snow or a big winter storm in the south. It's going to stick around and across the central plains. Mostly dry this week, Thursday into Friday. Maybe some light snow across the northern plains into the Dakotas as we head into Saturday. Let's move east. Let's talk about what's happening here. We've definitely got the lake effect snow going here through Tuesday. I'm going to back you up through Monday for the rest of the day. That snow in, into the northeast is backing off, and now we're just bitterly cold. And this lake effect with this westerly component could be really heavy, especially downwind of Ontario and uh, Lake Erie's, Lake Erie, that is. Along the Gulf Coast, there comes your moisture. We're going to get a little bit closer on that in just a second. It doesn't want to come up the coast, but maybe right here along the coast of North Carolina and South Carolina, some very light snow. Otherwise, high pressure building in. It's just creating that perfect westerly component of wind here around the Great Lakes. So you've got quite a bit of lake effect snow. And there could be some light snow moving through parts of Michigan and southern Ontario with another weak system heading into Thursday. Otherwise, high pressure builds in. It's going to take some time for whatever falls across Louisiana and Mississippi and even parts of Florida, Georgia, Alabama to melt with cold temperatures. And then across the west, high pressure here, some colder air pushing into the Rockies. No precipitation expected here, any significant precipitation anyway through the next seven days. Let's dig into the details, though. Across Texas, we start here. This is snow potential. This is the official forecast from the National Weather Service showing Houston right around four inches of snow. Some of the models are a little heavier than that. Now, down here, I don't know. The models are getting a lot lighter, at least uh, for snow. I think the problem is freezing rain. 
As we move through the day today, the rain will pick up, especially into tonight. That cold air will continue to funnel in, and now we've got a problem with freezing rain and sleet here across Texas, over from Victoria, and then up to Houston. We may start with some ice, some sleet, some freezing rain, and then go over to all snow. Really wild to see this. Even as the precipitation ends, it could end as some sleet, some freezing rain, and some snow as far south as Brownsville. As we head into Tuesday afternoon, the snow starts to settle down here along the Gulf Coast from Houston to Corpus Christi, and everything is gone as we move into Tuesday afternoon by 3, 4, 5 o'clock. The ice potential certainly here across South Texas in the form of freezing rain and sleet. That could cause some treacherous travel. Let's take a look at what's going on further to the east. This is what I think is really interesting is to look at these heavy snow bands that are starting to show up on some of the modeling. We may start as a brief period of rain or even some freezing rain. And then as our area of low pressure deepens, I mean, it's almost like, I don't want to say a nor'easter, but you've got this really strong gradient of warm water to the south across uh, the Gulf. And now you've got the cold Arctic air to the north. And combining that, you get some deepening here. Pressure falls, heights drop, you go to snow. And it could be really heavy snow, too, across Louisiana. And you're almost looking at like a winter storm set up on the northern side of it where you get that tight gradient between snow and no snow here. Pretty wild to see that setting up here. It's always iffy at best to get a snow in the south, but this is looking really strong on the HRRR, and that pushes the snow over to Pensacola as we head into Tuesday afternoon. Now also snowing in a mobile, getting very close to the Georgia uh, Alabama line as we head into Tuesday evening, and it might even continue to push that snow north into parts of middle Georgia. So Macon, maybe a little bit of snow for you. I think as we get into Florida, the problem here, especially to the panhandle from Tallahassee east over towards Jacksonville, more of a freezing rain threat here. Let's look at the snow tuttles. This is the official forecast. Three to six here across Louisiana. The official forecast for New Orleans, right around four inches of snow, arguably close to five. I want you to look at this and then look at this. This is the HRRR. I think it's overdoing things. It has a tendency to do that, but the fact that we're putting a foot of snow here in the southern Louisiana would be crippling. The official forecast is still for close to half a foot, so what's another few inches, right? And that certainly could be possible based on the idea that some of these models, especially the short-range NAM, is showing we could get some heavier snow bands setting up. That would dump a tremendous amount of snow here, and then totals trail off as you head to the east. But how about that? Maybe an inch of snow for Destin over to Panama City. The HRRR tries to put a little more snow here, too, keeping it more snow versus freezing rain. Uh, and there's a closer look into Mobile, New Orleans, with a foot of snow showing up on the HRRR. That is a, uh, a the, the Guccera model. It, it's a little fluffier. Here's your 10 to 1 ratio. Uh, we don't have that model run yet. Let's go back to the 6Z. It'll definitely be there. A little bit lighter on 10 to 1. So if those snow ratios, which likely will be higher, or I should say lower, just because the snow will be really a heavier snow, it's probably not going to be as fluffy. So that gives you the idea of maybe why you don't see a foot of snow. But you still get the impact of all of that moisture if you can squeeze that much liquid precipitation out. Snow totals to the east, much lighter here into South Carolina and Georgia, and then into North Carolina. But that ice threat increasing here across parts of Georgia, really South Georgia, down into North Florida, over to Jacksonville. Uh, pretty wild to see, again, cold air that far to the south and very light snow in the forecast. This is the, the official forecast from the National Weather Service here from Virginia Beach, maybe a half inch or so to an inch down to uh, the low country of South Carolina. Let's move north now into the Great Lakes. We are definitely going to see some cold air here, and that cold air moving across unfrozen Great Lakes. I don't know how much freezing we see with this cold air blast. It'll be wild to look at the ice analysis once this is over, but right now, pretty much wide open. Uh, if anything, the cold air is almost too cold. You can't hold much moisture with temperatures near or below zero or even colder so it takes a little while to get the snow going. And here along Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, I think that's where the best chance for heavy, heavy snow will be over the coming days. And then here's that disturbance that moves through heading into Wednesday. That's going to bring some more widespread light snow shower activity here into southern Ontario. That moves east toward Montreal and then into parts of the northeast with a little bit of light snow. Otherwise, the lake effect continues. And again, heavy here for the Tug Hill Plateau. Buffalo, I think we get some snow really south of town. It's going to be the heaviest banding of snow close to one to two feet, two to three feet, I think, here, downwind of Lake Ontario. And then up into to Michigan, 
into Indiana. Most of that snow north of Indiana, though, we're talking about here along the uh, the 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 shore of Lake Michigan here across the western part of the state. Some areas could see up to a foot of snow, maybe even more through Thursday, and then along the shore here of the UP of Michigan, several inches. Once you get away from the shore, you get inland here, not as much s- snow, really not inland, away from the lake. Uh, and then over towards Detroit, an inch of snow at best. So a little bit of snow into Michigan out of this. Again, not a huge, huge snowstorm by any stretch uh, across um, this area. It's just being driven by the Great Lakes and the unfrozen waters of the Great Lakes. Look at these temperatures. I mean, it's no wonder. And you can actually see, look at this, these numbers here right around the Great Lakes. The model's picking up on that heat energy being released very wild. And speaking of very small things to look at, uh, I want to go into the very deep south here as you get into Louisiana. As we get the snow coming in, one thing to look at will be the effect of small scale features like Lake Pontchartrain. Uh, you've got your winds here probably coming out of the east northeast. Do we see some influence with our precipitation just because of that as we head into Monday? Possibly. And, and again, it's going to be so close to getting You know, rain, snow, but once you dynamically cool up here, especially north of I-10, I think you're all snow, and it could be really heavy. A very wild setup. I'll be tracking it. If you're new and you've not subscribed, please subscribe. Come back. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're a regular and OG, thanks for coming back. Y'all have a great Monday wherever you are. See you next time.